Hello and welcome back here on the Sophistic for You YouTube channel. Today I want to discuss a nice thing in regards of defining loads and not the classical way actually through the graphical interface in Sophie Plus. I want to do this here in text input. And the reason why I want to do that actually is that at some point you might run into the requirement to create several loads and this might take simply too much effort to do in the graphical input. And today I want to show you how we can simplify this process using the text interface. And therefore I have prepared a very simple example, a simple column which is fixed in the bottom. And there's only one load as we can see here on the top of the column which points in the particular direction. However, this is something you can easily define in the graphical input and there's nothing fancy to it. However, the idea now is simply to let this load rotate um, in a 2D plane basically around a reference structural point. So we can see this here on the screen. So we will end up with a couple of load cases which will be available for you to process, to analyze, to combine afterwards for your project. Of course, four load cases might not be that difficult to do in a graphical interface, but however, just imagine it sums up to 8, 16, 32 load cases and so on and so forth. So this can be definitely very time consuming and hard to maintain in the graphical interface. So the idea is now to prepare a script which has a couple of input parameters. And those input parameters shall be the load case offset, the number of load cases and the load value. And last but not least, very important, the reference point because the system needs to understand where to apply the loads. So those are the four input parameters we are going to create for our script in a couple of seconds. Okay, enough here from the general overview, let's dive into the example. And before we jump into the script I have prepared, let me show you the system in Sophie Plus. It's a simple column fixed in the bottom and you can also spot a red dot at the top of this column which represents a structural point. And this structural point, when I double click on the properties here, is the structural point with the point number Two. Okay, and that's all for this example. I haven't created any load cases or anything else here. Time to jump into the Sophistic Structural Desktop to learn about the script, how we can achieve this creation of the several load cases. Okay, therefore I open SSD and we see the structure already popping up. So I did an export already and I have only actually two tasks I'm working with here. This is a text task. You see, I have renamed it to load definition and we got a linear analysis task here as well. Let's open the load definition straight away. Here we go. And we can see already the program module Sophie load here in the very top in the input line 16. When it comes to creating loads, we always have to use this uh, program module Sophie load. So let's look into the first input block here, which has the label input. So those four variables are the four values you have to specify in regards of creating your loads. So the first input is here the load case number. To be more precise, this is the first load case number. So every other load cases will simply increase by one. The second input here is the loads. So basically how many loads you want to create. I've just picked four just to stick actually with the PowerPoint I have prepared, but we can change this anyway later on. Then the load value, I just picked 10 kilonewton. And last but not least, the structural point number. Here it's structural point number two. And as you remember a second ago, I showed you in Sophie Plus, the top point of our system was actually structural point number two. Okay, so this is the input block. Nothing else to do here. Maybe one minor detail. I have used a let variable, so basically a local variable, which is only valid within the Sophie load program module. So let's look in the second part here in this example, and this is the more exciting one. It's the definition of the loop. So loops are used when you have to repeat tasks in your project. In that case, we want to create several load cases based on information we have specified before. And our loop basically runs um, exactly four times, and this is defined by this loads variable. In our case, it's four. 
Okay, inside the loop, we have now basically to think about how we basically specify the loads. And in our case, we kind of can't really rotate the load with an increment. So what we need to do is we have to specify the horizontal and the vertical component of the load for every different angle. And this takes a little bit of geometric uh, thinking here, but I found a nice website here from Matthew Brett uh, on GitHub, which uh, feel free to browse through it. And it kind of explains the formula for rotating a vector in 2D and pick the formula here in the theorem and applied it to my input here. So the first step I need to take is to basically define my angle better. And better basically is an accumulated angle of the different increments. So when the loop runs the first time, this angle better will be zero because the increment of the loop hashtag i is zero. So the whole term 360 divided by hashtag loads will be zero. Okay, so this value zero will then be used in the variable definition let hashtag cos bx, which is the cosine of beta times the load value to basically calculate here the uh, horizontal value. And the same is done for the vertical value, so basically the y direction, and is defined by let hashtag sine bx, and this is sine beta times p and sine of zero is actually zero. Okay, so and um, having this now in place, we can understand that every time the loop runs through these values, let cos b x and let sine b x will change accordingly. And this is now the key actually of defining the load definition. Let's look into the load case definition. So every time the loop runs, a new load case gets specified. And it starts basically with the first load case we have created in the input block, which was load case 101, and increases this load case number with every loop by one. So the first run will be actually the load case we have entered above, which was 101. Then the load definition itself uh, needs to be done in two steps. So the first step is basically the load value in PXX direction. And the second step is then the load value in the PYY direction. And exactly here, we can basically use the variables or the variable values we have created in the second ago, which were the variable cos BX and sine BX. Okay, so the input line of one point, just as an example, is point, reference node, number, structural point number, which is our structural point number two. The type is the global PXX direction, and the value of this PXX direction is now the variable hashtag cos BX. And the second input line for the Y direction is now um, simply adjusted a little bit that we have the PYY type and for the load value of course we need to have this vertical load value to end up with the resulting load of 10 kN as we have specified above. If you haven't done before as I mentioned close now the loop otherwise you will run into a warning or an error. Cool. So basically that's all the input script you are going to need to create now these load cases. So let's calculate this straight away. So what I do is I calculate here the whole group, click on calculate calculation. So if a load runs through and ASE as well. And when I jump into the system visualization, I see the four load cases popping up and I can now basically click through them one by one. Let me just quickly freeze this animation and set it to, I don't know, 50. So we can nicely see the deflection. And here we go. Okay, let me also show this now how it looks like in Sophistic Graphic. Let me open that quickly. I pull it in here. So I've selected in the sidebar in the second section loads, go on used loads and I see my first load case popping up already. I can switch to the second one, to the third and to the fourth one. So I created four load cases. Okay, now let's give it a shot and increase the numbers of load cases, let's say to 14. And all we have to do is we simply calculate the tasks again. I click on calculate calculation. Now the program creates the load cases again and performs the analysis straight away. 
I switch here to the visualization and I can see already my load cases have increased to 14 in total. Of course, we can't see that much of a difference now here anymore. That's why I jump straight into Sophistic Graphics to show you this here in a better view. So we got here uh, our 14 load cases and you can see how the load actually goes around our point. Okay, so basically that's the workflow you have to do if you need to create a couple of load cases rotating around a point. There's one tiny thing I want to share here as well, because sometimes when you play around in the script and for some reason you have created 14 load cases and then you want to go back to four load cases, for instance. If I now run the calculation again, what happens is that the four load cases will be created. However, the remaining load cases are still in the system. So therefore, I recommend when you work with these repeating tasks using the loop to basically delete load cases before you run the uh, load case generation again. So you can do that with that simple input line over here. I have created it here already. You stick again with the Sophie Load Program module. And what you do is you enter the input line, as we can see here, load case number, and then basically you remove all load cases, and in my case, from 101 up to 199 before I create the new ones. And it is important when you want to remove a load case from the database to use the load case type delete. Okay, let's switch on actually now this as well. And we stick with the four load cases and let's calculate this again. Now what happens is the software removes all the load cases. So basically the 99 load cases, and then we can generate the new ones without ending up actually with the other 10 load cases we actually don't need anymore. That's it actually for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you want to learn more about the text input and the basics and the fundamentals, you will find a link in the description to the text input in Sophistic FEA fundamentals course, where you can learn the CADIM language to create proper scripts for your projects. So thanks for watching and I hope I can welcome you in one of the next videos again.